fill this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory is what I heart's long for. Come in overflow where are your presence, Lord. Come on, one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Come on, your glory, God. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Father, we want to be overcome by you. Lord, where our opinions, our ideals, our ideas, our viewpoints don't matter any longer where it's all about you and your presence and your word and what you're speaking to us now, Lord. Even right now as we start this new sermon series, The Legend, the Legendary, Father God, I pray that you, Holy Spirit, will come and do something amazing in us, transform us. And I pray today, Father, not my words, not my opinions, Lord, that you're going to come and mold us and shape us Father God, and make us into the people you called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. I'm excited about this new sermon series, Legendary, the Ministry of the Holy Spirit. If you'd like the notes for today, raise your hand. I encourage you to take notes because we're going to dive deep into who the Holy Spirit is. And as we do this series, we want you to have a greater understanding of him. Um, or you could actually text the word notes to 510-944-0757. Again, if you like paper notes, just keep your hands up and the team's coming down. Um, on the mo monumentous occasion of Jesus' baptism, uh, the scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. And in this profound act, the dove was anointed as a symbol of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which really speaks to his nature. The dove serves as a reminder of God's divine presence in our lives. The Holy Spirit invites us to, to embrace both the gentleness and the wisdom given to us by God. He dwells in us. He brings peace. He comes and guides our steps on a path of righteousness. And throughout the word of God, we see symbols for the Holy Spirit, like the dove, like fire, like wind, like water, like oil. And these handles are just truths of the nature and the character of God that we serve. One who wants to fill us today. And today I want to be super clear that the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not an image. It's not an icon. It's not a symbol. He is a person. And the Holy Spirit is legendary. And what I mean about that is he may be popular, but a lot of times we don't understand who he is. Legendary also means influential. And the Holy Spirit wants to be the greatest influence in our lives. No one else should shape us more than his voice, than the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Nothing should shape us more than the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the counsel of the Holy Spirit. And as we dig deep into who the Holy Spirit is, I believe God wants us to understand as his people the power that rests on us by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And that's why today, even as we start this series, Legendary, today's sermon is called Legendary Empowerment. Let's open up our Bibles to John 14, 25 to 27. And this is after Jesus' death and resurrection, but he has yet to ascend to the Father. And Jesus is talking to the disciples, to his followers, and he's saying, these things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send, he will come. I'll send him. That he'll come in my name, and he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance of all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Do you know the story of Jesus or do you know Jesus? Because there's a big difference knowing about someone than really knowing them. This blonde girl right here, there's nobody else I'd rather hang out with than that girl. She's my best friend. And I'll be honest, this week, even as I was preparing for this sermon on my computer, comes these memories of photos come up. And it'll put this collage together with music. And, and there was these images of us when we were dating came up. And uh, or going to prom, actually, uh, she was just out this last week buying a prom dress for my daughter. And I heard she was in the changing room bawling, crying as my daughter tried on this prom dress. I said, man, it's not even the wedding. Come on. You know, uh, and so it's, it, you, but these, mem I love the memories that the photos evoke and, and I'll send them to her and I watch them and you hear the song and you get, you, you start to remember, but I'd rather, I love looking at pictures, but I'd rather be with the real thing. I would rather sit with her than look at pictures. And when it comes to Jesus, there are many people that have entrusted their lives to Jesus but do not understand the power that lives within them. They read the stories of Jesus as he walked and talked with his people. They are looking at the picture of their Savior, and they know he will come back someday. Yes, they look forward to that, but the Lord is saying, no, I want you to understand I sent the Holy Spirit. You don't have to just sit and stare at pictures. You can step into my presence every moment of your life. He is with you always. His Holy Spirit is always with with us. Jesus was led by the Spirit of God in everything that we did. When we read the stories of Jesus and all that he did, we have to remember he's all God, but he was also all man. And he was bound in a physical body and could not be in more than one place at a time. And, but the Bible says wherever he went, he healed and he set everyone he encountered free. People were never interruptions to Jesus and you're still not today. Regardless of what you're facing, whatever difficult season, Whatever dark valley, you are not an interruption to Jesus. And we see Jesus everywhere he went, he spoke life. He reached out to marginalized people. He brought them in. There was always a seat at Jesus' table. And he promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. God sent the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus ascended to the Father, he made a promise to all that believed, I will send someone to be with you. He was saying, you've seen me in action, bound in my physical body, but I'm about to send my spirit. And when my Holy Spirit comes to this earth, you will receive power to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Jesus was saying every continent, every country, every neighborhood, every people of all generations, of all nations, at the same time, I will be with you. And you, at the same time, if you're believers in me, will be empowered by my spirit, the same power that raised Jesus to life now lives in you. Now we get to walk and talk with the Holy Spirit. He lives. When we were praying earlier, it wasn't just person to person, but you were praying spirit to spirit, eternal beings to eternal beings with the same Holy Spirit. And it's a revelatory experience. God wants to awaken us now, today, to the power of the Holy Spirit. He empowers. He unifies. The Holy Spirit reveals. The Holy Spirit purifies. He gives good gifts like the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. There's no end to what the Holy Spirit offers us as he comes alongside us. 
Do not limit the Holy Spirit in your lives. And we need to be open to him. We need to be sensitive to his leading. We need to let him teach us and guide us. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would teach us all things, meaning that there's no arena in our lives that the Holy Spirit does not want to shape, that he doesn't want to reveal, that he doesn't want to lead you in. We need to know the Holy Spirit. It's interesting, just because we're around people doesn't mean we know them. Some of us here, you've been coming to the, sitting in the same pew, in front and behind the same people. You don't even know them, don't know their name. You could go to work and not know the people in your cubicles around you. Your neighbors, you've lived there for weeks, for years, and never really know them. God doesn't want that to be the story of our lives with the Holy Spirit. May we seek to know him, to submit our lives to the Holy Spirit. He is our intercessor. He is our helper. He is our teacher. We need him every day of our lives as believers of Jesus. As six, when I was 16 years old on a missions, with a missions team to Mexico, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit that changed my life. I never, and, and did I have it all together at 16? No. I had just been radically saved at 15 and a half. I had just been really opening the Bible three months prior. And here I am on this mission trip, and this little short Mexican guy, pastor, gets up two, three stairs and stares me in the face and says, God's got more for you. And he said, do you want it? And I said, I do. And the minute I said, I want everything God has for me, I, I can't explain it to you. I was out prostrate before the Lord for 12 hours, and he was dealing with me. He was setting me free, and I was never the same again. And through these years, all these years later, I, he's continually filled my heart with overflow beyond what I can imagine. He's empowered me with confidence to walk through difficult things, walk through things that have tried to keep me from God's best. See, many times we pray that God will remove those things from our lives. But God wants us to walk through it with the power of the Holy Spirit so that we remember the grace that's on us, the power that resides in us, rests in us. And God wants us to walk through it so that we can experience fear, victory in Jesus' name. And so that we live with the assurance that he is bigger and greater than anything that would try to attack us. I want to say this loud and clear. There is no competition to the enemy and our God. Our God wins every time. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Tell your neighbor, God wins. And I know there's some thinking, well, how come I struggle with this sin so much? How come I can't quit drinking? How come I can't quit smoking pot, doing drugs, looking at pornography? Because you like it. Let's just be on it. You like it. Bible says that. Sin is for a season. And you've not submitted it to it. You haven't brought it to the cross. You haven't said, Holy Spirit, right here, invade this part of my life. Because when you do, he will empower you. Not that it'll be easy, but you'll see as days and weeks go by, all of a sudden that temptation is gone. That desire is gone. He will give you the power to go another way. But you got to come to yourself and say, I like it. Help me not to like it anymore. Let's be honest. That's why. We know it's sin, but we like it. And we got to say no more in Jesus' name. I won't let anything keep me from God's best in my life. Because God wins every single time. When I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, which is a continual thing in my life, I was filled up with a power that was not my own anymore. He's my comforter. He's my friend. He wants to be your companion. He wants to be your door opener. He wants to be your healer. 
when it feels like nobody's standing against you, he wants you to know that God is for you. You may not know, see him, but you can feel him. You may not want to acknowledge his power, but I'm here to say that his power rests in me. And it's the Holy Spirit that reveals the nature of God through the Word of God. If you're reading God's Word without being Holy Spirit empowered, you're going to fall asleep every time. But you read that thing knowing who God is with that intimate relationship with God and with the power of the Holy Spirit, that scripture comes to life every day. I shared last Sunday, I taught about, we spoke about the resurrection. Never once have I had to preach the same message of the resurrection. Why? Because God's word is fresh. He's got a fresh word for you, fresh revelation. He wants to change your here and now. Tell your neighbor, quit being religious. God doesn't want religion. He wants to change you. He wants to change the look of your life. He wants to make you a perseverer. Quit living on your feelings. That's why you're frustrated. You're like the worst roller coaster ever. Up and down, up and down, twirly whirls, upside down, up and down. It's your life because you're living on emotion and not the power of the Holy Spirit. It's what gets me most excited about on Sundays. You don't know, every Sunday I think, okay, I'm going to teach this thing. I'm not going to preach this thing. But what gets me excited is that people would have that encounter with the Holy Spirit. Because I don't care how old you are. I don't care with what you're dealing with. The minute you encounter the Holy Spirit, He gets a hold of you. You will be filled with power on a high and you'll never be the same. And He'll lead you down a path where you can walk into the freedom God has for you. You are not who people say you are. There's some labels some here have been living out. You are not the labels parents, grandparents, neighbors, principals, teachers put on you. You are who God says you are. Made in the image of God. In the likeness of God. God wants to get a hold of you. And if, if I've seen the Holy Spirit, I've seen him do amazing things. I've seen the Holy Spirit bring comfort in hospital room. I've seen Holy Spirit bring, raise the dead. I've seen Holy Spirit heal people of cancer, of all forms of sickness. I've seen the Holy Spirit mend marriages. I've seen the Holy Spirit bring peace to people who are anxious. I've seen the Holy Spirit help people who can't sleep at night. I have seen the Holy Spirit make barren wombs fruitful. I have seen the Holy Spirit give wisdom and direction in the chaos and crossroads of life. It has nothing to do with your own or my own striving. He is accessible to us all. You just got to welcome him in. Come on, Holy Spirit, fill this place. Change this atmosphere, not just the room. Change this place. Bring healing. Bring your warm embrace, change me. Show us your power like never before. Make your presence known here in this room now. Breath of God, I pray even right now, you breathe life into every life here. I need a touch from you. We need a touch from you. Shine on us today, Holy Spirit. Come on, right where you're at, say, I make room for you, Holy Spirit. Come on, I wanna experience your transformation. Because God's best life for you is better than your best life for you. Some of you have been trying to manifest. The only thing you're manifesting is yourself late to work. Manifesting more stress, more pimples, acne on your face from all the stress you're causing yourself. Let me tell you, you can't manifest yourself time to work, but let me tell you who can mass manifest something in your everyday life. 
That is the Holy Spirit, and he can manifest something in you that is undeniable. He wants to fill every area of your life. You need, But you need to say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. You're welcome in my home. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in my job. Holy Spirit, I don't want to just experience you on Sunday. I want to experience you in every season of my life. I trust you today. I surrender completely to you. I give you access to my heart. I give you access to my stinking thinking. I give you access to my mouth. I give you access to my tongue. I give you access to all that I am. I give you access to my single life. I give you access to my dating life. I give you access to everything, my hopes and dreams and my future. God, I want what you have. I want that legendary dove abiding in me. Because throughout scripture, that dove is a reminder of hope of a hope that's available now, a hope that wants to come. And we see that dove, even as Jesus is being baptized in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the prophet, Jesus' cousin, the prophet John the Baptist, was in the wilderness, and he was calling to and, and proclaiming a coming Savior proclaiming a gospel of repentance. But when Jesus approach, was approaching his cousin, who he knew as a kid, it wasn't through natural wise, but it was through the Holy Spirit. It was through the spiritual eyes that he saw more than his cousin. He saw Jesus Christ. He saw the anointed one. He saw the savior of the world. He saw the Messiah. And some of us are frustrated with our friends and family and the way the world is acting around us let me tell you the only way they're going to come to Jesus is through the revelation that the Holy Spirit comes it is the Holy Spirit that remains removes scales from eyes it is the Holy Spirit that opens ears to hear the power of the gospel it is the Holy Spirit that softens heart you can't do it I can't do it only God can do it But he wants to use you. He wants to do it through you. And we see this through Jesus' life. Matthew 3, 16 through 17, it says, And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. Some of you need to get baptized on April 21st. You've been waiting long enough. Do it now. And he saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove and rest, coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The dove reminds us of the new thing God wants to do of it. Because see, God used the dove intentionally. Remember, these were Jewish people. They knew the Torah. They knew the stories of Noah and of Moses. And if you look back, that dove, that dove would have reminded them of the story in Genesis of Noah building an ark. An ark where God came and destroyed and removed all the ugliness from the world and created something new. And as, we, as Noah waited for that flood water to recite, a new world was going to be revealed. He wants to create something new in you. He wants to change the topography of your life. He wants to remove all the junk and filth and bring something new in you. Before I married my wife, I made it very clear, washing dishes is against my religion. So I bought her dishwashers all through our marriage. When one breaks down, I don't call repairman. I say, get a new dishwasher. But when I wash dishes, I don't touch them. Too dirty for me. But, and, and if you're a conservationist, I'm very sorry. I take all the low flow restrictors out of my kitchen sink. I even do it out of my shower heads. So that way when I turn on the water, I don't get half a gallon a minute. I get 80 gallons a minute and I'm like drowning. But I do that to my dishes. 
And I know that if I take out that low flow restrictor and I let that water flow full blast, I let that water flow and flow and flow, it's going to clean. It's going to bring all the dots. And that's what God did in the world. He brought the water, the Holy Spirit. And some of us were dealing with that mess we were talking about earlier, that sin. And we're not letting the Holy Spirit in to wash us and to remove the junk. But if you let that water keep flowing, at home I got a pressure washer. I could wash down the walkway of all the algae and dirt growing and it'll leave it like new and some of us aren't allowing the Holy Spirit to come and flood and invade those areas of our lives and remove the sin and remove the filth and remove the things that so easily ensnare us and that's why we keep struggling time and time and time again you need to open the faucet of your life to all that the Holy Spirit has for you now Quit holding them back. You're the only one that could keep the Holy Spirit from moving in your life. Nobody else. Not the devil, not anybody. It's you. But you got to let it come. And we see this even in the story of Noah. Noah had to build that ark. And here it was after 40 days of flooding. It says in Genesis 8, 8 through 12, then he sent forth a dove, a dove again. The same dove we saw over Jesus to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot. And she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. And he waited another seven days. And again, he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back in the evening. And behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Come on. God wants to bring fresh fruit. He wants to do a new work in you. He wants to change even the flora and fauna of your life. Even the words you say, the dreams you dream, the way you think will change. And here the dove comes and see, look, a new work is going to be done in you. And so Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and he sent forth the dove and she did not return him anything. When the earth was ready to be inhabited, the dove did not return to Noah, but resided on the new earth. Jesus in Matthew was heralded a new earth, a new kingdom, a new era that's passing away. He's saying, I want to come and reside in a new place in you. Everything in your life is becoming new. Tell your neighbor, old things are passing away. Some of us are dealing with the same mess we were dealing with day after day after day after day. It's getting hot up here. Good preaching. And we're dealing with that same mess over and over and over again. And God's saying, no, I want to do a new thing. I want to usher a new era. And Jesus was ushering a new era of empowerment. No more annual returning to try to cover the sins of our lives. No some more sacrifices for the remission of sin. This is a new era of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, everything is changing. The kingdom of God is at hand. See, the Holy Spirit is a harbinger. He comes. He's the one who welcomes, who activates, who originates, who heralds. See the dove descending saying, everything's changing now. Jesus is empowered by the Holy Spirit and he starts his ministry and he begins to proclaim and demonstrate this new era. We need his power. We can do nothing apart from the Holy Spirit. We can try to preach all we want, but if there's no power, there is no power without the power of the Holy Spirit. We can try to demonstrate the kingdom of God, but without the whole power of the Holy Spirit, it is empty. When the dove rested on Jesus, Jesus, he's now empowered to herald and demonstrate. Come on, proclaim and demonstrate. Proclaim and demonstrate the new world, this new era. And this is a pivotal moment, a moment where all of humanity, the calendar, everything shifted in this very moment. Nothing was going to be the same for humanity again. 
Look what Matthew 4 says right after this. He says, and he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in the synagogue, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and every affliction among the people. Jesus is proclaiming the good news and he's demonstrating the good news. Proclaiming the good news and demonstrating the good news. And look what it says five chapters later. Matthew 9, 35. Almost the exact same verse. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and every affliction. See, Matthew 4 and 9 are bookends. They're reiterating that Jesus is proclaiming. Jesus is demonstrating. And in between chapters 5 and 9, we see Jesus just doing that. Matthew 5 to 7 is, the, is a sermon on the mount. He's t proclaiming that a new era is here. The kingdom of God is at here. And in chapters 8 and 9, you read stories of Jesus' new era. Blind I see, the lame walk, the dead are brought back to life. People tormented with evil spirits are given freedom. Jesus did not just proclaim the good news, he demonstrated the good news. Tell your neighbor, it's a new day. And as believers in Jesus Christ, our lives are to proclaim and demonstrate everything's changed. Everything's changed. My life, everything has changed. I would, t I would ask you to ask my wife. She'll tell you the man she married 28 years ago is different. I'm always changing. There's something new. Why? Because he's always doing a new work in us. The kingdom of God is at hand in our lives. We are to proclaim the message of our lives that the Father desires to bring all of humanity back to his heart. He wants to bring all. He desires that none should perish. You think of that person you don't want to see in heaven, he wants them in heaven. In our daily conversation, we should proclaim the grace of God. We're to proclaim the mercy of God. We're to love. We're to be show the faithfulness of God we know in our lives. We are called to be ambassadors of reconciliation. It's not just about proclaiming that we have the Holy Spirit and his pastor resting and his power resting in us. It's the proclaiming that leads to demonstration. We're called to demonstrate it. You wonder, why do all the weird people come to me? Because there's something in you. The bugs are attracted to the light. They come to you, they wanna hear the story of why is your life the way it is? Is it completely perfect now? No, but even at this point, God will use it and bring breakthrough as you proclaim and demonstrate, come on! And this isn't meant to happen just on Sundays in the house. Yeah, we gather and we're reminded of who we are in Christ Jesus. We gather to lift them on high. But we, friends, are to go out into the streets, back to our workplaces, to our families, to the baby showers, to the boardroom, and proclaim the power and, and demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Healing should flow in the grocery store. The Prince of Peace desires to show up in the coffee shop. Miracles break forth in our living room. We are called to not just proclaim, but demonstrate. I remember working in my secular job at East Bay Mud. A gentleman came into my office at that time. He was a practicing Muslim. He said, I heard who you are, and I heard that you're a pastor, and we knew each other at this time. He said, I need a touch from God. I've got cancer. That was over 18 years ago. He's alive and well comes to Shiloh. God healed him of cancer in Jesus' his name. His son came to Jesus. His God wants to use you where you're at. You don't gotta stand up and preach the word like I am. You look pretty crazy. I only preach this way to you guys. To the world, I just listen. And I ask him, can I pray for you? You know, I have yet to have anybody say no. Never. And it, but if they did say no, I pray for them anyway at home. I pray for them anyway. But they come to you because there's something in you. You are a child of the Most High God. You're a magnet to mess. You're a magnet to madness. You're a magnet to messed up people. 
And it's God setting you up so that he can show how he knew, pro proclaim, and demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants to show up at the coffee shop. He wants miracles to break forth in your living room. We're not just called to proclaim, but to demonstrate. And this is what Matthew is showing us. Just like the dove rested on Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the dove rests on you. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to proclaim and demonstrate. And when we experience the Holy Spirit as a dove in our lives, it is because we're good hosts. We're good hosts through our words, through our actions, through our choices. We want to be a good host. When I was a kid, my dad used to take me. He was a, worked for a logistics company in Richmond. And I remember he would take me back there and we'd go hunting for doves. And he'd actually set out these traps with, made by chicken wire and two by four um, boards. And, and we put um, little bird feed and then we'd pull the stick. We'd catch these beautiful white doves with little black rings. And then we'd catch them, and next thing you know, I had a cage at my house of these doves. And I'd go in there, and they were cool. Well, one day I had a birthday party. It must have been, I don't know, nine, ten years old. All these kids came, started making all kinds of commotion, messing with the cage. Those doves took off and never came back. Rowdiness. Some of us cause so much rowdiness in our lives that we're not good hosts to the Holy Ghost. We need to be good hosts so that he comes and through what we do every day. But it doesn't happen in a silo. Our prayers need to lead to practice and our practice need to lead to that pilgrimage, to that path of life, to that journey God has for us. Prayers aren't just prayers. Prayers lead to practice. Practice leads to pilgrimage. Come on, say that with me. Prayers lead to practice. Practice leads to pilgrimage. We're, we can't just be prayer warriors. That's Jesus' job now, seated at the right hand of the Father. The Bible said he's continuously interceding. Why? Because he is finished. What he did on the cross is done. His blood was more than enough. His death on the cross was more than enough. And now he's waiting for you and all of humanity to realize the gift they already have in Jesus Christ. Their sins are paid. The other day, my wife went shopping to Sephora. She's a gift card magnet. And if she doesn't have a gift card, she steals my gift cards. But she goes to Sephora and she goes to buy a, a makeup. You know, I can't believe how much you people spend on makeup, but praise the Lord, you know, whatever. You know, whatever you do. I don't put any makeup on my face. I look good, don't I? Anyway, okay. it's a whole other conversation. I always told my daughter, you need no makeup. You're beautiful just the way you are. But then my wife started buying her makeup. But she goes to Sephora and she tries to buy this makeup with a gift card. It had already been paid for. She was excited. Her and my daughter, they had two little baskets. I'm sitting there texting and they're like filling up these baskets. Because they assumed it was all paid for. They go and do that. Somebody had given them a Sephora gift card. Her mom, sitting right next to her right now, that had no money on it. You know what? Well, see, and that's how many of us are. She was just out at Basie's, had all these gift cards, bought prom dresses, shoes. They come back with a gift card. Everything's been paid for. See, the world needs to know it's been paid for. Your sins have been paid for. The liability on your life has been paid for. The debt you owe has been paid for. It's been paid for. But how does that happen? When we proclaim and demonstrate. It's not in a silo. Some people here are waiting for them to have a less busy year to lean on the things of God. Oh God, once my kids grow up, I'll serve you. Once I'm done with the job, once I retire, once, you know, my wife and I figure it all out, once, you know, I get this house in order, once I get the new car and we pray for the blessings of God and all of a sudden those blessings detract us from the blesser and we've been praying for a new job and now we can't serve Jesus because I got a new job. And we make the blessing our priority and not the blesser. And a lot of us are living life that way and God's saying, no, I want to operate with that kind of power in your everyday life. We've been trying to go to Israel now for years. 
We were going to go back in 2020, March of 2020, COVID hit. We were going to go again, war hit. It's like God doesn't want us to go to Israel. I think it's because of all the religious people at Shiloh. Because you think it's all at the Sea of Galilee. Let me tell you, where Jesus was living on the Sea of Galilee, he was proclaiming and he was demonstrating. Miracles were happening in his everyday life. This wasn't a man's fishing trip. This was their job and miracles, provision. More than enough was operating. People were being raised from their dead in the everyday life. And God's worried. He thinks you need to go to the holy place. Well, let me tell you, the veil was torn in two, saying there are no more holy places there's only holy people you are carriers of the presence of God only play thing that makes this place wonderful on Sundays is you team Shiloh we come together with this heart and this desire to counter Jesus I was telling my wife the story of a man who went and lived on the backside of the desert for 12 years to get closer to God, spent 12 years there, and then he gets home to his mama's house. Because he had been there 12 years, he got up, fired and everything. Shows up to his mama's house, whose mama's been raising her kids, including him, for the last 30 years. And as he begins to talk to her, more revelation came about who God was out of her mouth than his mouth, 12 years of doing nothing. It was in the day-to-day, -day, raising her kid, paying the bills, going to work, the grind of every day that fresh revelation come, that the Holy Spirit moves. It's our current season does not limit the power of God. It is the day-to-day -day challenges, the moments where we fe feel we are weak, that God's strength is perfected. When we need to lean into Him, lean into Him now and watch what God is going to do. Come on, right where you're at, fill me, Holy Spirit. This is a religious thing. God wants you to move with power. Same way Jesus was along the Sea of Galilee. His death and resurrection changed everything. See, some of us think, oh, I got to live in Israel. I got to live by the Sea of Galilee. I got to be in that holy place. God say, no, the veil has been ripped. The Holy Spirit helps us to be holy. And from the moment that Jesus is filled, he's saying every, every believer, can be filled in power. We are a holy people as followers of Jesus. And if we want to proclaim and demonstrate, we've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit in our souls. We have to be good hosts to the Holy Ghost. We'll only discover who the Holy Spirit is when we set time and allow him to create that sensitivity in him. We will not proclaim or demonstrate if we do not know the person. You can't talk about a person. I get in trouble almost every Sunday by my wife because I always talk about her because I know her. I, who do I always talk about in my life? I always talk about Jesus. I always talk about God the Father, talk about the Holy Spirit, and I talk about her and my kids because I know them. I bring all, some of you into it because I know you. We talk about what we know. And if you don't know the power of the Holy Spirit in your everyday life, if you don't know who he is, if you don't realize the doors he's opened, the favor he's brought, the blessings he's caused, the changes that have happened in your life because of him, you will not talk about him. But some of you need to pause right now and look at your life and say, thank you, Jesus. It's only because of you. Come on, can you take five seconds now to praise God and say, it's because of you, Jesus. You're called to proclaim and demonstrate. He'll counsel you. He'll teach you all things. We don't have a percentage of the Holy Spirit. It's all or nothing. It's 100% or nothing. He wants to always be with you. He wants to always be there. He, if we're open to his hands, he'll shape us. If we ask him, he will guide us. If you go to him for wisdom, he'll counsel you. He will teach you all things. And we need to be sensitive and invite him to our day-to-day -day lives. 
I love when we come together as Team Shiloh in the church and as a body of believers outside of Sunday. Look at all what happened Easter festival. All those people coming to Jesus. Look at the creative work that happened on Easter Sunday. All three services full and the, almost everybody in the, each service raised their hand to accept Jesus Christ. I want you to see these are opportunities for each of you to experience and be a part of what God is doing the way he wants you to proclaim and demonstrate that the kingdom of God is here. We, are, we do not do projects in this place. We do not do events in this place. We proclaim and demonstrate the good news of Jesus Christ. Shatim Shiloh, you are called not only to say that you're followers of Jesus Christ, but to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit resting on your everyday life. When we give out clothes, we do it in the name of Jesus. When we give out food, we do it to declare that the kingdom of God is at hand. We are generous, not because we are, but we do it in the name of Jesus representing that he is our supplier we don't just do good deeds we're representatives of the kingdom of God we're here to fulfill the mission of Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit wants to help us be a new creation he's the one who announces He's the one who creates. He's the one who empowers. He's the one who welcomes a new creation. It is the work of the Holy Spirit that changes our lives, changes the topography of our lives, changes the flora of our lives, the thoughts in our lives. He is how our spirits are changed. Your five-year plan is good. Ten-year plan is good. We were talking about it just yesterday, coming back from Pastor Jerry's homegoing celebration. We were laughing, having a great time, talking five, ten-year plans. But it's the Holy Spirit that's going to guide us. John 1.32 said, And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. See, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was an apocalyptic event. See, he was speaking of future things to come. It was changing our perspective from what's here to an eternal perspective that comes from heaven. The parts clouded and a voice of God spoke down while that dove was coming and resting on Jesus, speaking to the new creation that is found through Jesus. In Genesis, we see the Spirit brooding over the waters as creation is taking place. And in John, we see the dove brooding over the waters of baptism and the message being that the Spirit of God, He's here to create something new. Just like the Spirit of God hovered over the deep, the chaos and the darkness, God brought creation to a place and He declared it is good. That same story applies to the Holy Spirit now. He's hovering over the broken areas of your life, over those dark areas of your life, over those unfruitful areas of your life, over those uncertain areas of your life, over those areas areas of your life that appear to be nothing and he's saying I'm hovering I want to restore I want to make you into sons and daughters of God I'm proclaiming this isn't only good but it is very good what I want to do in you is very good and the word of the Lord for you today is don't miss what God is doing now tell your neighbor anything is possible with the Holy Spirit we see it in John, John 1, 1, in the beginning, in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, in John 1, 5, he says, in light, the light shines in the darkness. In Genesis 1, 3, let there be light. In John 1, 4, in him was life. In Genesis 1, 4, let the earth bring forth living creature. The Word of God is not two different stories, but from cover to cover, it is a story of redemption of Jesus, about a new life, about a new hope, about reconciliation, and the Holy Spirit doing a creative work in you. John saying, I'm going all the way back. I'm going back to the beginning. Some of you need to go back to the beginning. Some of you have been hiding some stuff from the beginning and it's festered and it's hurting and you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to come and wash it, the waters of the Holy Spirit to come and restore and do something beautiful in you. 
He wants to do something new in you. Come on, tell your neighbor, he wants to do something new in you. Let him go back, all the way back. The other day, yesterday, we had an old, old song playing. I was working out and I heard this old song. I played it, Pastor Melinda. She started getting down. I said, boy, you could take the girl out of Oakland, but you can't take the Oakland out of the girl. Took her back. Took her back. God wants to go back and say, that creative work I did in you when I, you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's nothing compared to what I want to do in you now. It's a progressive work. You're an ever-changing new life. Quit putting your life on hold. He's speaking hope today to your every day. You cannot make it without Jesus. You can't face death without Jesus. You can't live out God's best without the Holy Spirit. You cannot experience the calling and the purpose of your life without the Holy Spirit. You can't experience destiny without the Holy Spirit. You can't walk through depression without the Holy Spirit. You can't face death without the Holy Spirit. When Jesus is there, there's always hope. When the Holy Spirit is here. There's always joy. There's always new mercies. There's always power. There's always peace because it's not who he is. It's not what he gives. It's who he is. And I believe I'm here to proclaim a new hope over you, over some sorrow in the room. I believe I'm here to proclaim peace over despair. I believe Jesus is here and the Holy Spirit is here saying there's a new fresh beginning for you, healing for you, redemption for you. As a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And as you walk out these doors today, do not hold on to my words. Do not bring that back to remembrance. No, ask for the word of the Lord to resound in you. Every word that God is speaking to you right now to reiterate and resound in you in your everyday. Lord, I pray tonight you're gonna wake each person up here desiring more of you come Holy Spirit Woo! the atmosphere of your houses are gonna change where it's been dark I just hear the Lord saying it's been dark and depressing some of you don't even like going home God's saying I'm changing that new beginning is right here for you today Right where you're at, can you stand up? He makes all things new. I know the Holy Spirit right now, He wants to do something amazing in you. If you entrust your life in His hands, I want to say it again, with the Holy Spirit, everything is possible. He wants to do such a tangible work in you. He wants people, He wants the world to see that continual new you. And that comes only through the power of the Holy Spirit, the legendary empowerment of the Holy Spirit. He no longer wants to be a mystery to you. Come on, even right now where you're at, I just encourage you, just put your hand, Holy Spirit, we need you. Do you guys know that song, Daniel? Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. now in this atmosphere I hear the Lord even how he dis, a dove descended he wants to reach down I hear him saying it so clearly to some people here he wants to reach down and meet you where you're at he's not saying you have to have it all together he's asking you right now will you just allow me to meet you where you're at 
regardless what the water looks like, regardless where the terra firma looks like, the Holy Spirit saying, let me land in your life. So before I pray for salvation, because I believe there's some people here not only get saved, but God's saying it's time to reinstate your walk with the Lord. You've allowed the blessings of God to distract you. You've allowed those things that you said, well, once this is done, once I get my degree, once I have that career, once I earn another $10 an hour, once my housing situation, once my kids, once this, once that. No, God's saying, will you let me move in your day to day now? And you've allowed those things to distract you, deter you from your salvation, from your walk with the Lord. So we'll pray for you in a bit. But I want to pray for every person here, even as we were singing that song. I pray, Lord, you, Holy Spirit, come today. Open us up to your will and to your way. I pray that as you have your way in our lives, all men will be drawn to you through what you've done in my life. Holy Spirit, even now I pray you harden, you heal hardened hearts. Even those that don't believe because of things that have happened in your lives, maybe even don't believe in miracles or that you, God, can change their situation. Soften hearts, remove blinders, Lord Jesus. Those that think God can bless them, but he can never bless me because of my family, because of where I come from, because of what I did, because of my thoughts, whatever that is. Today, we pass down that lie of the enemy. Heal, Holy Spirit. Bless, transform, change hearts. Transform each person here. Renew them in your name. We pray for a renewal, even as the floodwaters covered the earth and created new topographies. Even today, they're looking back and saying, wow, look at the layers, look at the difference, look how the earth changed. Father, I pray you're gonna change our lives. New fruit, more fruit. Help us be bearers of fruit. Help us to be those that display your image, Jesus, wherever we're at. Refine us, Holy Spirit. And even now, Holy Spirit, I pray for those that have walked away from me. Doubt you. Doubt you, Jesus. Those who have never followed you, Jesus. We know your word says people come to Jesus only because of you, Holy Spirit. Through a re- revelation, through scales of eye on eyes and ears being removed, through hardened hearts being softened. So even now, I pray for the lotion, that super moisturizing lotion of the Holy Spirit to soften hearts and minds. And I pray even right now, Lord, those that are far from you, that they're going to be ready to receive you. Those that have never received you or have drifted away from you. So right now, if that's you, the Bible said all you got to do is believe that Jesus is Lord. Confess with your mouth that he's risen and you will be saved. So if that's you today in the room or online, repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe I am a new creation because of you. You rose so that I can rise. And I thank you that I'm new in you. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, before we clap on the count of three, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to be so bold to pray, to raise your hand, because I know it could be scary. But don't do it to us. Raise those hands to Jesus, saying, thank you, Jesus. So if that's you, on the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Come on, right over here. Amen. Come on, anybody else, raise your hand. Come on, young guy over here, we see you. You see you in the back here in the middle. Praise Jesus. We're going to end worshiping Jesus. Altars are open. Love to give you a Bible. Have an amazing Sunday. See you this week at Pathways.